Hi, Chris. Okay, I can finally start this. The reason I can finally start this is that I finally managed to track down one of these Advan crystals. Whew. You will remember that I found one a long time ago and I just asked whether or not you wanted one and I didn't hear back from you for a couple of weeks, I think. And then you said, sure, I'll take it. By that point, it was already gone. Then I had to hunt down a second one, but I got it. So here we go. Um, I'm hoping this should be, relatively speaking, straightforward, but the last time I said something like that, it wasn't. So we shall see. Lovely watch, though. Lovely watch. Lovely, lovely. It's been polished, but not badly. Someone also polished the, uh, the crystal significantly. That's okay. We have a new one. I see one servicing mark and some fingerprints inside the case back. That's what that black stripe is, is servicing mark. Make a black paint stripe and then you scratch over it. So this is a 7019. This is the this is basically a, a proto 7S movement. <clears throat> in that it's got all the bells and whistles and um, it, it, and jewels and diaphic settings and all that stuff. The next step for this was to become the 7S. Uh, it's a runner. Uh, that's a little loose. These are almost always loose. No, it's pretty loose. Let's get that weight off of there. Hang on just one second for me. Come on. Come on. I have to get a different okay. one. Hang on. Got that apart. Hang on just one second. There we go. Okay, so. Got this here. Hazy fingerprints. Uh, you can see we've got some brassing here, and that's from the winding weight being a little loose. But you see here it's got these lovely tiny die thick settings, which is totally normal for a 7S, but for a 7000 series, that's pretty wacky. This was a high end piece, but this is what became that movement. Whoa. Yeah, look at that flopping around, huh? Yeah, lower and upper are worn, which is interesting, but this has had a long life, so it is what it is. Come on, get off, there we go. <sighs> nice thing about starting a job, there's no question, you just start it, because it's time to start the job. No thinking, no questions, you just do it. Come on, stop. God. Get out. There. There we go. I am just... Hang on just one second for me. Okay, I got that out of the case. This really is a nice piece. You'll notice that it has the metal dial ring instead of the plastic one. Always good to see. Dial's a little hazy, but the loom is good. Pretty clean. Look at the graded silver blue. That's crazy how much work Seiko put into these things. Um, let me get the, let's get the hands off. Okay, there that is. So for fun, uh, I reached over and I got out, this is a, this is a 7, 7S26C. You can't see the, uh, the, the diaphic settings, but they're under there. What's interesting to me, anyway, probably not to anyone else, uh, is that the, uh, the movements are essentially the same. I mean, they will swap back and forth but all the all the placements all the stuff is the same basically 
they just upgraded this one, made it a little bit uh, different. They had some cost saving measures. You'll notice the day and date wheel on these modern, more modern movements are plastic, whereas on this watch, they're metal. So really, the ultimate 7S26A really is a 7019. If one way to think about it, one way to think about it, maybe someday I'll build a, a 007 with one of these. I wonder if I could. The dial feet are all the same. Huh, that'd be an interesting idea. Hmm, well, whatever. Okay, always to the first things we go. Always to the first things first. And we got our thingies out here. That goes right there. There we go. Take off this reduction wheel. Oh, right. It got dropped. I gotta clean that up. Hang on. Okay. A little bit of dressing down on that blade. There we go. That's so much better. I'll tell you, a sharp screwdriver is what you need. Come on, get off of there. All right. Pull your pallet bridge. Yeah, that would be interesting making a Super 007 with a 7019 movement. Because it would have not a lot of plastic in it. But the thing with the 007 and people, the plasticky bits, is they, they run beautifully and they run for a very long time. So it really doesn't matter. bit of power left in the mainspring, but floppy, floppy, floppy. Okay. Let's look at that train. Hey, that screw is loose. So it was that one. Okay. Mm, dirty, but not terribly so. Yeah, that doesn't look bad. That doesn't look bad. First reduction on the other. However, and I'll get those diafix settings out of there off camera because I want to make sure that I'm right on top of them because those diafix springs on these are really tiny and they tend to go kapunk and they're gone. Yep, Seiko really stepped up their game with the 7019 Vision of the Future. Nice thing is these are really easy to come apart because I mean it's just a, a clean design and they just they come apart pretty well, which is nice. Okay, get in 
there. We got our next basket. Let's get this handy dandy little C clip off of there. There that is. Well, it's looking pretty clean so far. There's your all metal day wheel. All metal day wheel. And your metal date wheel. Come on, stop fighting me. Like that. There's that. There's that. There we go. Back to this littler one. Get these little teeny tiny screws out. Again, so far, the only thing I'm seeing that looks funky, not funky, looks like it's going to need extra attention is the lower mainspring arbor port, which doesn't happen all the time. In fact, it's pretty rare for these, but that's kind of floppy. Detail guard. Yep, see, look, and it's got that, that's sort of diafix bridge right there. Those are, those are fun to play with. See, look though, metal date wheel, and all the wheels are metal, and everything is jeweled. No plastic, whereas on one of these, this is another 7S. See, you've got plastic date driving wheel, this would be a little plastic white corrector gear, there's plastic gear there, this is plastic of course. Um, and they don't have the 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 tri point springs. They've got this double parallel thingy. Hmm. Seven oh nineteen. Come on, yeah. So I'm going to be very curious actually to see the numbers out of this thing. If this is, make sure that I'm not talking out of my hat. Oh, look at that. It's also nice and clean. Hmm? Okay. Okay, let's get, uh, get that off of there. that. Leave that. Get this one off. Little die fix screw. Huh, interesting. Because in the earlier ones, these die fix bridges, they only had one screw. They had one screw right there. And these have two. Additional security. That's a smart design. That is a smart design. Oops. Let me drop through. That goes in there. Here is our Keyless Works set up. Come on. There's that. It's, it's a very simple system. It doesn't mean bad, it just means simple. It has a lot of elegance to it. They figured out what they needed to do and did it, and they did it with an economy of design. Yeah. 
I think that's the plan. Because I have almost everything to build a, an SKX 007. Including 7019 movement. I'll see what happens. I think that's a pretty interesting idea. All right. I ought to do a lower mainspring arbor port jewel. Uh, I'll double check that first, though. But anyway, that's how we take one of these. Okay. Well, out of the cleaners. And you can see it looks all nice and shiny. There's that lower mainspring arbor port jewel in place. And you can see actually a little bit more wear from that loose winding weight is more evident. You can see it on the high points here. So that's definitely loose. Um, if the weight is clean now, I'm going to pull it out and see about what we can do with it. Um, but in the meantime, let's start putting this all together. Yeah, looking, looking okay. So nice when things are clean. Okay, got the main train and everything together. Going to do that thing that people like to see. I'm going to bring it back to life. Train looks clean. Mainspring feels good. So here we go. Sorry for the noise, folks. Normally, they would be out back running around, but it's raining. So they are in here. Goodness gracious. The problem is there's no depth perception of one eye. There we go. Okay, well, she's a runner. Balance is nice and stable. Let's, uh, let's put it on the machine. Okay, here we go. Okay, got a little bit of beat error. Clean signal. Okay, so some of you, a number of you keep asking, have been asking, we want to see you adjust the arms. Again, I don't have a way to do that that would work because I have to be right on top of it when I'm doing this. Also, seeing how the arms move, if you, if basically, if you don't have a time grapher, it's easy to figure out what arm does what. And if you don't have a time grapher, then fiddling around with adjustments, you're just whistling Dixie. So there's no point. Um, I'm happy to tell you what I'm doing, and uh, we can go from there. I just don't have a way to film it. Okay, so first things I always do is I get rid of that beat error. I'm just gonna see, I'm gonna move the stud lever here to my left and just see what happens. Ah, good. So that was the correct move. You kind of get a feeling for it after a while. You can see where the arms are supposed to be in a factory original movement. Because you've seen it so many times. Okay. i got to drop this down. Now I'm going to adjust the accuracy down. So let's try to get it there, and that gives us a little more beat error because it's moving in the same direction as the as the um, beat error arm. Oh, see, it went too far. Look at that. Okay, well, let's pull it back. I'm now going to go to the right to adjust the beat error to try to take that stuff out. Huh? Skipped over it again. Hmm. I'm going to the left. There we go. Look at that, huh? 
So these are just the preliminary numbers. Haven't done anything to it. But it's a good, clean signal. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to assemble the I'm going to assemble the calendar side, and we're going to see how things going. We will revisit. Okay, got the calendar on, and uh, just watching the numbers. As you can see, they're coming up nicely. I tell you, man, seven oh nineteens. Unsung, unsung movement. They are where it is at. I wonder if you took a 7019 movement main plate and you put a lower mainspring Arbor Jewel from uh, 6R15 in there and then you use the 6R15 mainspring with the Sprawn. Um, I, wonder, I wonder how that'll go. I wonder what you'd see out of that. I've got all those bits. Maybe I'll do that. I'd be curious to see if one could make like a super hybrid. The only thing to make it even better, of course, is if you could, I don't know, 7019 uh, 6R15. Have the best of both worlds and have the hacking and the hand winding. That'd be pretty cool. But I don't know that you can. Okay, that's pretty decent. I, I'm going to... We're right at the end here. Jeez, God, it is almost the end of the day. How'd that happen? So I'm going to let this run in overnight, as I like to do, and we will revisit tomorrow. Hey, 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 look at that. There you go. Oh, whoops, it's on the wrong thing. It's supposed to be 53. Well, my results might vary a little. Some. Tiny bit. That's the thing with the setting the the right lift angles it, it only the only thing it affects is the apparent amplitude but even not even that by much Looking good. Okay, that's it. There she blows. You can see our numbers that we're getting. The reason there's a little bit of a loss here is because when you average to multiple positions, you have to average multiple positions. So you might have a loss in one position, which is offset by a gain in another. It's kind of uh, shooting in the dark. I, I can't really adjust for someone's wearing habits, but I can adjust out averages, which is what we do here. I tell you, these 7019s, good movements. Okay. And that's about it. Um, aside from seals, I mean, we didn't, I didn't need any extra parts. Well, in the crystal, but. Anyway, there is the old crystal in this packet. Really is something. What a lovely watch. I've never seen another one. This is the only one I've ever seen.
What a cool watch. And a great movement, beautiful dial, unusual piece. That is certainly neat, and I was very glad to see it. And thank you so much for your patience. I, I cannot thank you enough. I know it's been a long time, and I appreciate you sticking with me. And there it is. And I look forward to getting this back to you. Okay. Thank you so much.